like to introduce Mrs Liz Lamb, who is Head of Primary at Nord Anglia here. I'd like to say thank you very, very much for talking to us today. And we've spent a lovely, delightful morning in your foundation department looking at child-initiated learning. So we're really going to talk today about your vision and how this all came about and all the hard work that's gone on behind it as well. You're right to say it's about vision because we really needed to think long and hard about what we were creating. Mm -hmm. Because we were building something right from scratch, literally from the sand up, we needed to choose exactly which direction we were taking the early years. And it's always been a dream of mine to make sure we could really put best practice into place in a school. By best practice in the early years system, what I mean really is child initiated learning. Children between the ages of three to five learn best when they're following their own enthusiasms and their own interests. We've all seen three-year-olds at home who know the name of every dinosaur and can tell you the difference between herbivores and carnivores, even at such a young age. So we wanted to engage the children with their own interests. And when they first start to arrive, we make sure that the classroom's set up in a way that covers all areas of the curriculum. So we make sure we've got specific areas for writing, for maths, for investigating, for role play. Now, all the adults in the classroom will then be observing the children very carefully about what their interests are, what they're interested in, which areas of the classroom they like to be a part of. And also, at the end of the day, the children share what they've enjoyed and what they've learnt that day. We then take that back to Development Matters and we find out where the children are and what the next steps is in their learning and how we can provide enhancements and resources to support the children and develop their learning further. So other teachers will be very worried about how you make sure you do cover all seven areas of the curriculum and how you encourage the reluctant learners. So one child who might always play in a certain area of the classroom. How do you monitor that? Um, well, well, what we do is we look in their learning journey. So we take photos and we take observations of the children over a week. We might just focus on a few children and we set targets for those children using the development matters. How do you manage the classroom like that? How do you ensure, again, that everybody is getting involved in that and that you are linking that learning? Yeah, so we'll start off again with a small carpet session, we'll talk about what's available in the classroom, what's been there, what their interests are, we might spark it again, we have a display board that we take photos of them during the day, make notes and we stick those up so we draw the children back into what they've been doing the previous day. How have you managed the resources? We made a conscious effort not to buy everything in because we wanted the children to lead their own learning and to be responsible for making things in the classroom. So what you'll find is the children, when we decide what they'd like to have in there, they go away and they make everything that goes in there. They do research, we make posters and labels and it all comes from the children. It's not ready made. Sometimes we saw the adults standing back and that's quite a skill isn't it, to know it is. when to step in and when to leave them to, to carry on with what they're doing. Absolutely, it's a very careful balance and you just have mm. to make sure you monitor that and sometimes that you do leave them to play independently and when, if it's necessary, you can come and get involved and ask them and sometimes it might just be a question that extends their learning and then you can just step back and they carry on and take mm. it to another place, absolutely. What do you see to benefit to the children? Um, I think it really makes you focus on that child. It really brings out the qualities of that child and makes them feel valued, that you actually value their interests and you want to take that forward. It's a little like building a house. You want really solid foundations. And if you have those solid foundations and you take time to build them and you don't rush and you really make sure that you've put those in place, then the rest can be built very quickly on top. But it's important to remember and to spell out to parents that education and your children's future is not a race. There's no finish line. We don't have to complete it in a certain amount of time. And so we do just allow each child to grow as a person. Yes, we follow a curriculum, but we also are well aware that children need to go at their own pace from time to time. So um, there's been an appreciation, I think, from all the teachers higher up the school about just how hard early years works. That it's yes, it's play, but it's also learning. 